Hey, without a doubt, friend, I know I can trust and depend on you. Because if you're viewing this uh, video, you did as I asked. I thanked you earlier for watching the previous video. And so I want to get right to it. But again, I want to thank you for uh, continuing to give me a little time of your valuable time. Because for African Americans, time is not a luxury. Lives are being lost. Land is being stowed uh, from under us. And friends, I fought again hate violence and crime for 23 years. I'm still fighting, but I did not include economic development. I realized today that you cannot address violence without addressing economic development or vice versa. You cannot address economic development without addressing violence. So we must have a state of emergency for black America in reference to education, housing, economic development, and violence. If we don't address those at the same time, we're operating through tunnel vision. Friends, I want to give you a couple examples, but first I want to reiterate on a couple things that I said in the first video. Friends, I said earlier that the cheapest thing that you can buy is most black pastors and black politicians. Well, I'm not retracting that. I'm firmly stating that again, but we have trusted individuals such as our black elected officials and our black pastors and leaders to represent us as a community. Well, the truth is they've dropped the ball. Well, God, that's really not the truth. The truth is they haven't dropped the ball. They're just playing ball in their own court. They have their own team, and we aren't part of that team. Friends, we need individuals that will represent our community. Extraordinary things always happen by ordinary people like you and me. Friends, I want to tell you something. Here in the city of Chicago, our Chinese brothers, they have Chinatown, which has their retail district, uh, their businesses. Here in Chicago, we have Greek Town, where my Greek brothers have Greek Town, their own retail district their businesses. Here in Chicago, my Hispanic brothers, they have Pilsen and downtown Melrose Park, businesses there, and they rightfully should. My Irish brothers, they have Bridgeport and, and Beverly, where they have their businesses, and they rightfully should. My Indian brothers, my Korean brothers, they have their commercial districts and their businesses, and they rightfully should, but why not us. Why is it, again, that African Americans own less than 1% of the business population? I ask you to help me once again. I cannot fathom that truth. You mean we own somewhere between 0 and 1% of the business population? Friends, we don't own anything in our own community. Every dollar in the African American community leaves at 6 o'clock. Dollars have to generate. Dollars must circulate for our community to become a vibrant community. We must provide jobs as an alternative to the violence that's plaguing our community. When we give these kids on our street corners a housing, education, and jobs, we eliminate their excuses. They no longer could say, the white man did this, or I don't have this, I don't have that. Friends, we need to provide tangible alternatives, and then, only then, can we hold these individuals accountable and get them off our streets. Friends, I want to give you a couple examples. Here in the city of Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, there is the city, and Alderman Sandy Jackson says that the Former U.S. steel mill lakefront land is almost 700 acres of land. It's being developed, as I speak, by a non-African American. Our good friend, Alderman Sandy Jackson, gave a white developer $98 million in city subsidy. Let me also give you some news. I just said that it was almost 700 acres of lakefront land. Wrong. The city would like us to believe that, but it's almost double that amount. You want to know why? That development is bordered by Rainbow Park and Rainbow Beach to the north. Now stay with me. In 1960, 
African Americans were stoned on that beach. I pause for a reason. I want you to get that in 1960, African Americans' blood was shed on Rainbow Beach because we were trying to deseg desegregate that beach. And they were successful, but I want you to remember black blood was shed on that same beach that is connected to this development in which our alderman, our friend Sandy Jackson, just put a plaque on Rainbow Beach last summer. Last summer, there is a plaque on Rainbow Beach to remind and for us to remember the blood that was shed on Rainbow Beach. And then our good friend, Alderman Sandy Jackson, turns around and gives $98 million in city subsidy to a white developer to, let, to develop that exact same land right next door to where that blood was shed. Well, that black blood was shed in vain if we allow that massive development to be developed by anyone else besides the African American. Friends, African Americans, we must own our land like every other ethnic group. Anyone viewing this video that is non-African American, friend, listen to me. I'm not blaming you or any other nationality for the problems that plague the African American community. African Americans, we are our worst enemy. We elect individuals. We worship with individuals that don't have us in mind. Let me continue about this development, though. The city and our good friend Alderman Sandy Jackson, they have this development billed as a $4 billion project. I know for certain that it's over $100 billion. Let me tell you something else. That is the largest lakefront property in America in an African-American community. Let me continue. I told you about the wonderful Rainbow Beach that is bordered by this development to the north. Well, to the south of that development is also a well-kept secret to most African-Americans. It's another park called Calumet Park. Now, there is a canal that divides that development from Calumet Park, but so what? There's a canal. How come we can't bridge the canal? We can. They know we can, and they're going to do it unless we do something about it. Now, let me tell you again, we have possibly 1,400 acres of lakefront land, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. We have over $100 billion development. Now, my white brothers and my other brothers, they have Navy Pier, lakefront land, North Avenue Beach, lakefront land, Oak, Oak Street Beach, lakefront beach and land, and they should. But why not us, Miss Alderman Sandy Jackson? Why not us? You mean to tell me you couldn't find no African Americans nowhere? Friends, let me tell you, that's a crime. I'm going to share with you another crime. We just replaced the Kennedy King College that used to be housed on 69th and Wentworth. We moved that college to 63rd and Halsted. Can I tell you what used to be there since the early 1900s? It was a commercial retail district. Yes, I was raised shopping there just like most of you in Chicago that's looking at this video. If you were raised on South Side Chicago, you did some shopping or you were too young to remember on 63rd and Halsted. Now, let me tell you the crime about that. I want you, the viewer, give me an example of another community that eliminated its retail district. You can't. You know why? Every other community expands their commercial retail district. You don't eliminate it. You know what? That wasn't by coincidence. That's by design. Some of our elected officials, yes, they champion that call. You know what they champion? They champion the residents of Eaglewood and the South Side of Chicago to shop outside of their community. That's what they champion. Now, Eaglewood does have its problems, I'll be the first to admit. But some of these areas that I define as a war-torn community, when these communities get ready to rebirth themselves, where will you put the commercial district now? Where will it go? See, you can put a college you can put a house where retail should go, but you cannot put retail where a house or a college should go.
You think about that for a minute. Friends, these are crimes that are taking place all around America. And these crimes are being allowed by our elected officials and our pastors that look just like you and me. I want to tell you something, friends. You have a lot of people that are black on the outside, but you need to look at what's on the inside. Now, I know you probably laughing. Say, hey, this guy I'm watching, he looks white. Now, I am, again, unapologetically African-American, but friends, what we do today or don't do today will affect tomorrow. What we do today or what we don't do today will affect tomorrow. Time is not a luxury. Friends, I need you to keep viewing, though. I got some more videos coming up. Keep watching. I know I'm smiling. I know I have a smile on my face. But these issues that I'm addressing and the issues that you think about daily, they are not laughing matters. Please, let's disagree without being disagreeable. I know you don't agree with everything I said. I know you won't agree with everything you're going to watch about me on Good Morning America, Today Show, MSNBC, all the local TV stations. I know you won't agree with a lot of things that I have to say, but let's keep talking. Let's keep communicating. Please don't give up on me. And I promise not to give up on you. And I'm not running for an elected office today or tomorrow. I have no agenda. Friends, we have to start thinking generationally. We have to, we must think generationally. Generationally. What we do or what we don't do today is definitely going to affect tomorrow. God bless.